नमस्कार वेलकम टू टूडेज डिस्कशन ऑन दी उत्तर कांड ऑफ द वाल्मीकि रामायण आई एम डिलाइटेड दैट वी हैव टूडे विद अस डॉक्टर आर रंगन जी आई विल गिव अ स्लाइटली लॉन्ग इंट्रोडक्शन टू डॉक्टर आर रंगन जी एंड द रीजन फॉर दैट विल बी अपरेंट वेरी सुन रंगन जी ट्रेसेज हिज लीनियज टू श्री कृष्ण सूरी द फेमस ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी कॉमेंटेटर ऑन द वाल्मीकि रामायण Shri Krishna Suri's lineage of disciples include Govind Raja, the great commentator of the 16th century. Tangan Ji's grandfather, Shri Venkata Rama Shastri Gal, used to do daily recitation of the Valmiki Ramayana, and he gave his text of the Ramayana to Shri Ranganath Iyer, who recited this epic more than 1,000 times. He also wrote the full text by hand 26 times. Shri Ranganath Iyer gave the text that he used for his daily recitation to Ranganji. Ranganji's father was Shri Krishna Premi Swami Gal, the renowned Bhagavat Kathakar, who also made vital contributions to Sanskrit Sanatan Dharma literature. Born into such a lineage, Ranganji himself had translated the Shankar Bhashya on Brahma Sutras in Tamil at the age of 18, and wrote a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, synthesizing the commentaries of Shankara. Ramanuja and Madhva at the age of 28 by the way he composed 7000 shlokas in sanskrit at the age of 13 he also holds a masters degree in management and a doctorate in yoga he has written numerous books including 10 volumes of rigveda commentary in sanskrit and a massive 10 volume ramayan of valmiki he has also written a separate book specifically on the uttarakhand there is no better person than dr r rangan ji to answer our questions on the valmiki ramayana thank you so much for being with us today the question we are looking at today is this is the uttarakhand a part of the valmiki ramayana is it real is it itihas any comments to start with yes a direct answer for this has to be this uttara ramayana is not written by the original author of shrimad ramayana that is valmiki it is a later edition okay hmm. in this 21 notes valmiki ramayana video series that we have made when we came to the end of the yuddha kand there was this phrase by marshi valmiki ramayanam idam kritsnam this is the entire ramayan so it reads as though we have come to the end of the story but the version of the valmiki ramayan that we hold in our hands today and we have been reading the gorakhpur geeta press uh, publication of the valmiki ramayan it does have a seventh kanda the uttar kanda so on one hand the end of yuddha kand reads like it is the end of the story there is the phalashruti there is also statements like and then ram ruled for many many years all was well in the land and of course ramayanam idam kritsnam but then there is something else and when we start to read the uttar ramayan what strikes us is that it is inconsistent with what we have read earlier for example ravan's character hmm. for whatever his uh, positive whatever the positives or negatives may be ravan in the ramayan up till the yuddha kand is a great warrior yeah. nanami antu kasya chit he says yes. i will never bend down he is the last one remaining but he still goes down fighting yes but the character of ravan hmm. in the uttar kand is a bit different can you tell us a bit more about that yes uh, throughout the story of uh, ravan in uttara ramayana we see that, that ravana is getting defeated by several persons this is a very strange happening which uh, we don't find in valmiki's original text for example he became very tired while fighting against devas vasus rudras and adityas and he couldn't uh, win them 
finally indrajit helped him to conquer these devas this is how it is uh, told in the same way uh, he was defeated by vali uh, and somehow he managed to escape by begging for a friendship uh, with vali and uh, the same happens with arjun uh, kartaviri arjuna uh, he got defeated by kartaviri arjuna and somehow he got released um, showing a friendship towards uh, kartaviri arjuna like this uh, uh, in so many events even even regarding his fight against yama there also brahma uh, and others come and stop yama to use his weapon mm-hmm. uh, against ravana therefore ravana managed to win this kinds of stories are there where uh, ravana is getting defeated several times but this is not recorded in valmiki's ramayana is a very important uh, uh, aspect that you are observing um, if a story comes in one place in a huge literature it has to come in several other places also that we expect for example uh, for example um ahimahi ravana story mm-hmm. this cannot be you can't expect this story in valmiki ramayana because valmiki never narrates this story uh, on the other hand if this story is narrated in ananda ramayana it comes in several other places of ananda ramayana we expect okay like that if uh, in uttara ramayana this kartaviri arjuna episode comes and uh, ravana's defeat uh, by vali comes these things we expect to to occur in the original text also at least in one or two words one or two lines okay probably when angada is ridiculing uh, ravana he could have told a hey, uh, you were defeated already by kartavirya you were defeated by my father vali these yes. things you can see either in ramcharitamanas or in kambara ramayanam not in valmiki ramayana in valmiki ramayana when angada comes as a messenger to ravana hanuman comes as a messenger to ravana nowhere you see angada or hanuman or vibhishana uh, ridiculing ravana by telling that you got defeated already by vali even though there is a chance for including the stories of ravana's defeat these things are not there in original text of valmiki which clearly indicates that uh, this this kartavirya ravana's defeat by kartavirya or vali are not of valmiki yeah. indeed and the story of vali defeating ravan if that was true then sugri would have mentioned that to you, ram yeah yeah sure. when ram said that i want to rescue sita from yes. ravan sugri never mentioned that yes vibhishan also talked about ravan's strengths and weaknesses but he never mentioned these defeats yes to ram when he it seems this- that vali ravana is mightier than vali because Uh, rama shoots at uh, ravana he he is uh, sending some arrows and he is thinking the arrows through which i pierced vali are not piercing ravana are not working now uh, are not working now yes that is how rama contemplates so these things show that these things it, it appears to me at least that ravana is mightier than uh, even kumbhakarna is mightier than the same arrow the same expression comes here also yes. while rama is shooting arrows to kumbhakarna he thinks why these are not uh, uh, effective any more effective yeah, yeah. Yes. so kumbhakarna also ridicules rama telling that i am not vali <laughs> okay to shoot easily okay mm-hmm. and so like ravan's character which is inconsistent between the uttar kand as we have it and the earlier kand as written by valmiki there are also some factual inconsistencies in the story line yeah so one of the things uh, we have mentioned in the videos mm. is that the uttarakhand says that ram bid farewell to more than 400 kings that had gathered in ayodhya after the coronation but it's interesting why they had gathered in ayodhya mm. the uttarakhand says bharat had put together this massive army in order to fight ravan to free sita that is what is mentioned in the uttar kand yeah. <laughs> but in the yuddha kand mm. bharat first hears about sita and what has happened uh, about the war in lanka only when hanuman comes to report this to yes, him yes, and yes, by yes. that time the war yeah. is over yeah. 
So the 400 kings could not have been gathered by Bharat. Yes. But the Uttarakhand mentions yes. that. So there are these factual inconsistencies yeah, yeah. as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> now moving ahead, the Uttarakhand then talks about the story of Shambhuk. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. The Shambhuka, um, the narration goes like this, that a Brahmin comes and cries that his uh, child was, uh, child died. In Rama's kingdom, na uh, putra maranam, so this uh, death of any Anyone is not possible in Rama's kingdom because Rama's kingdom is so dharmic. So it must be someone's fault, maybe Rama's fault, uh, which would have led to this death of a Brahmin's child. Regarding this, Rama wanted to make enquiry. At the time, sage Narada says, uh, yeah, Shudra is doing tapasya to attain heaven. And for due to this, this Brahmin child died. Rama is searching for that Shudra, finally found in some forest, the Shudra. Rama asks that Shudra which Varna he belongs to. I am Shambhuka and I am a Shudra, he says. As soon as Rama hears these words, and I am doing tapasya to attain heaven, he says. As soon as Rama hears these words, Rama just chops the head of uh, Shambhuka. This is the story narrated in Uttara Ramayana. I the, narrate the Uttara kind of the yes Ramayana. Yes, yes. yes. I, I narrate it as it is found in the text. But when we go to the original text of Valmiki, I clearly observe in this original text up to Rama's coronation, is a very interesting text which has some 20,000 verses. Nowhere, not even a single place, a Shudra is put down or a Shudra is ill-spoken for a simple reason that he is a Shudra. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is not even a single event where Shudra is uh, described down or spoken uh, ill. I think that is a very important observation. More than that, nowhere, no class is considered to be inferior in the epic Ramayana. Please understand this. There is a very, very rare literature in the world where, which runs for 20,000 verses and nowhere it uh, proclaims that one class of humans is inferior to mm -hmm. another human class. And such a noble and such a profound epic where Rama goes to Shabari's house and she belongs to Shabara clan, even her very name reveals it. The one who belongs to Shabara clan, he goes to that house and he is encouraging her tapasya, kachite uh, vardhate tapaha. And he has the hospital, he accepts the hospitality of Shabari. Uh, where the, the epic in which the so-called Shravana Kumara, even though Valmiki doesn't mention that name, hmm. uh, a Rishi Kumara, you may, you may call him, this Shravana Kumara's uh, father was a Vaishya and the mother was a Shudra and uh, such a boy can do tapasya and that couple can do tapasya. Uh, in that epic, Ramayana, where a person belonging to any class can do, do tapasya. Uh, this story of Shambhuka, which uh, stops uh, Shudra doing tapasya, cannot come. Mm. And this is my understanding regarding uh, Shambhuka's story. Since he is Shudra, he is killed for doing his tapasya, cannot be accepted. And uh, this is not definitely by, the, by Valmiki who talks about Tapasya of uh, several other classes, including Shudra Varna. Yeah. Indeed, the <coughs> incident of uh, the Muni Rishi Kumar being killed by Dasharath. Yes, yes. 
Hmm. His all three of them are referred to as Rishi and Muni yes. by yes. Maharshi Valmiki. Yeah. True. And to the extent that the father says that and Dashrath is the Chakravarti Maharaj yes. and he has killed his son. Hmm. Doesn't matter who his parents were, they were all Rishi and Muni and the uh, and the penalty for the crime of killing such a person was that you will also die yeah. because of Putra Shok. Yes, yes. And he had said, I know that you had done this by mistake. In yes. fact, if you had done this deliberately, yeah. killing some uh, uh, Muni, yes. the penalty would have been much higher. Yeah. One more added question on the Shambhuka story. Some people say that he was trying to uh, conquer the Devas. He was trying to win over the heavens. And therefore, supposedly, such a uh, penalty was justified. Any thoughts? Yeah, we may add so many things like this. Of course, uh, uh, winning the heaven, there is one statement there, Deva Loka Jigishaya, okay, to win the heaven. To win the heaven is just like uh, uh, Rama um, was stringing the bow to win the hands of Sita. Hmm. Uh, this is such a kind of expression. It is not just going and wage war, waging war uh, with the devas and winning devas. It's not like that. Winning heaven means winning heaven through tapasya. Going to heaven through tapasya. That is a tone any anybody can clearly understand. We we can't give such a twisted meaning. Uh, and uh, some some people may add even without any passage there. Some people may add that uh, um, Shambhuka did tapasya to destroy the world. It's just a sweeping statement. Hmm. Uh, not such a kind of uh, uh, statement is given there in the epic. Okay. And uh, he did not uh, do tapasya to destroy the world. Um, in fact, his uh, tapas is called there. In that text, it is uh, called as tapyantam uh, tapa uh, uttamam. He did an excellent tapasya. This is how it is told. And uh, Rama comes to him and says, Vacha satada vakyam dhanyastamasi suvrata. O suvrata, suvrata means O well disciplined, O well owed. Dhanyaha tamasi, you are blessed. Rama says, before killing him, Rama says, you are dhanya. Ab dhanya, you are, you are blessed and you are in good discipline. And uh, Shambhuka is doing uh, an excellent tapasya. These kinds of words very clearly show that his tapasya is good. But still, S uh, the, the narration goes in this way that he is a Shudra, therefore he was killed for performing this good tapasya. You can't take Devaloka Jigishaya, these kinds of expressions as uh, going and waging war with Devas and killing them or destroying the Devas and uh, uh, conquering heaven. It's not like that. Winning the heaven is to enter into heaven, that's all. Uh, here the idea is, since he is a Shudra, he was killed. That is how it is. It, it goes, the story goes in this way. And which is inconsistent with what we Yeah, have. definitely. The, the, therefore, it is inconsistent de definitely with Valmiki. Moving on now, there is the story of Sita's banishment yeah. in the Uttarakhand. A very controversial story. Can you tell us your views on this? Sri Ramayana is uh, considered to be Sharanagati Shastra. And uh, Sharanagati Shastra, Sharanagati means one who, uh, Sharanagati is a kind of submission, surrendering, taking refuge. It is called a Sharanagati Shastra because Sri Rama is Sharanagata Samrakshaka, who never gives up anybody, anyone who takes refuge in him, who surrenders or submits himself or herself to him. Mm -hmm. This is uh, taken to be the most important uh, virtue of Sri Ramachandra and uh, Rama himself is talking about it. Mitra Bhavena Sampraptam Nat Yajayam Kathanchana in Iddhakanta's 18th chapter. Uh, one, uh, I will never give up anyone who comes to me with the pure devotion. Mitra Bhavena Sampraptam. Even if he has flaws, Dosho Edya I will never give up him. This is how Sri Rama says. And he also says, Sakrudeva prapannaya tavasmiti cha yachate 
అభయం సర్వభూతేభ్య దదాం ఏతత్ వ్రతమమ దిస్ శ్లోక ఇస్ టేకన్ టు బి ద హార్ట్ ఆఫ్ రామచంద్ర అండ్ హార్ట్ ఆఫ్ వాల్మీకీస్ రామాయణ బై ద కమెంట్రేటర్స్ దిస్ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ అస్ చరమ శ్లోక సిద్ధాంత ఆఫ్ వాల్మీకీస్ రామాయణ దిస్ షోస్ ద స్వరూప ఆఫ్ రామచంద్ర ద కోర్ నేచర్ ఆఫ్ రామచంద్ర అభయం సర్వభూతేభ్య దదామి ఓన్ హూ కమ్స్ టు మీ టేకింగ్ రెఫ్యూజ్ ఇన్ మీ ఐ విల్ గివ్ సెక్యూరిటీ టు హిమ్ సెక్యూరిటీ టు హిమ్ against all the beings mm-hmm. in the world it means even if the whole world is against him i will not give him up this is the statement of rama please listen even if the whole world is against him who takes refuge in me i will not give him up and this statement is taken to be the siddhantam the charma shloka of valmiki's ramayana and ramachandra సచ్ రామ క్యాన్ సచ్ రామ గివ్ అప్ సీతాదేవి హూ ఈస్ టేకన్ టు బి ద గ్రేటెస్ట్ శరణాగత ఆఫ్ రామచంద్ర దిస్ ఇస్ క్వైట్ ఇంపాసిబుల్ ఈవెన్ సీతా సేస్ వల్ సీతా గాట్ సెపరేటెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ రామా ఇన్ ద ఒరిజినల్ టెక్స్ట్ ఆఫ్ వాల్మీకి హనుమాన్ ఆన్ సీయింగ్ సీతాదేవి సేస్ ఆశ్రితేతి ఆంధ్రసంస్యత రామ సఫర్స్ in separation of sita for three or four reasons being a husband he suffers being a lover he suffers and there he adds this being a sharanagata samrakshaka being the protector or being the guardian of uh, sharanagatas he suffers he feels sorry that his commitment his duty mm-hmm. is now getting diminishing for that he is uh, throbbing ramachandra is throbbing sita also to uh, to impel ramachandra mm-hmm. sita when he sends back hanuman she says oh prabhu oh lord you are all you, you, you are a very great sharanagata samrakshaka and uh, andrasamsyam paro dharma tatta eva maya srutah i heard i learned from you only that uh, sharanagata samrakshana is the greatest dharma in the world and uh, your own wife a uh, sharanagata is suffering now why your arrows are not coming towards the rakshasas who are torturing me and you should you are supposed to come very quickly this is what sita <laughs> says all these shows uh, and hanuman also on seeing sita devi he is lamenting there he says rajyam va trishulokeshu sita va janakatmaja trilokya rajyam sakalam sitaya napniyat kalam three worlds three worlds kingdom are sita devi in these two which is greater sita devi is greater and uh, ramachandra may give up even the kingdom of the all the three worlds but rama will stand with sita this is what hanuman says uh, on seeing sita devi uh, rajyam va trishulokeshu so all these things very clearly show that rama can never give up his uh, vow of sharanagata samrakshan mm-hmm. at any cost this is point number 1 point number 2 uh, um the, the the separation of the couple is um divorce of the couple is stopped by the veda the panigrahana mantras ihaivastam ma vyaushtam okay be together get not separated get not divorced mm-hmm. this is how the veda vedas injunction is there so rama will not go against to this vedic command he is a very staunch follower of the veda this is the second point we all it is well known that rama is the meaning of the veda mm-hmm. rama is a living example of the veda who cannot give up this vedic command this is a second sakha saptapada babu bhava these kinds of mantras rama will strictly follow this is the second point third point ramayana is vedas explanation from that point of view also uh, rama's uh, rama sacrifice of sita rama's banishment of sita is wrong sharanagata samrakshana there also rama's uh, giving up of sita is wrong third point this month this uh, this marriage matrimonial ceremony is a pratigna mm-hmm. pratigna in panigrahana mantra it comes in front of the ritual fire they take an oath they do pratigna maya patya jaradashtir yathasaha this is a vedic mantra we will be together always till the death 
till the old age jaradashti means old age till the old age and this is how the vedic mantra says and uh, this groom is chanting this mantra after this after doing this pratigya rama will not give up that truth that pratigya and rama is well known for truth as rama is a sharanagata samrakshaka he is also a man of truth this is also well known ramayana has three main themes if you remove these three themes then you can't have ramayana at all theme number 1 <coughs> sharanagata samrakshana for which ramayana is called sharanagati shastra uh, and the theme number 2 um, pratigya pratigya paripalana for which rama went to the forest for 14 years in his uh, prime age theme number 3 uh, uh, love and chastity uh, where uh, neither sita nor rama give up each other throughout the story all these three themes uh, got destroyed get got uh, disturbed and demolished by uttara ramayana mm-hmm. all these three themes have gone in uttara ramayana in uttara ramayana rama has given up his uh, his uh, sharanagata sita devi sharanagata shiromani sita devi and uh, rama gave up his vow uh, of uh, matrimonial ceremony and uh, rama gave up the vedic injunction rama gave up also the what to say uh, this uh, uh, togetherness with sita mm-hmm. or uh, the, the true affection towards sita in all these sense which are the themes of ramayana which are the most important themes of ramayana for which ramayana standing for all these years mm. okay all these themes are getting destroyed by just one single book named uttara ramayana yeah hmm. and some people argue okay. that ram actually did banish sita because he considered his raj dharma hmm. to be higher than any commitment towards sita that is what people argue in fact they see this as a sign of a great leader yeah however in the uttarakhand yes the reason ram gives for supposedly banishing sita is that he was afraid of the controversy apavada bhayad bhita yes true hmm. i am afraid of what this hmm. will mean for my reputation my glory will go away my glory will go yeah. away and therefore he is banishing hmm. this is of course again completely inconsistent true 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 with ram's character as we have understood it yes, so true. far mm. yes true but further on, on this comment of raj dharma would you like to because this is a very strong argument some they say that uttarakhand is true and actually it reflects how great ram is because he holds raj dharma to be higher than uh, his commitment to his family or yeah. to his Uh, why see uh, assuming rama has done all these things to justify rama rama bhakta sa are giving mm. these kinds of answers but when you see the text the actual text is not yeah. giving this reason yes, actual text doesn't give that reason is a very important point next one uh, in this uh, what is raja dharma the 100th chapter of ayodhya kanda which uh, karchit sarga which is called yes. karchit sarga Rama uh, uh, talks in detail about his own views of Raja Dharma. Kachit sahasram urkhanam ekam ichasi panditam. This is what he says. We need to choose one wise among hundreds and thousands of fools. Hundreds may tell something. For that we need not follow that. We have to, we have to take the advice only of a one wise man. One wise man is greater than all other thousands of fools. so this is what he can follow in raja dharma always mm-hmm. uh, 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 let me here reflect the thought of mahabharata karanat dharma manvichet na loka charitam charet the great man understand dharma through rational and not not just blindly following what the world is doing this is what mahabharata says which uh, normally becomes the quality of feature of uh, uh, the great leaders we see Uh, life histories of the great leaders so raj dharma mm. is actually saying that great leaders should mm. not follow what large number of people are yes, doing just yes. because it's wrong if True. they are doing something wrong uh, the leader should not do that yes definitely that is raj dharma even leader did not do that yes uh, thousands of people say don't go to forest mm. rama went to forest yes against their wish 
okay to establish dharma true yes. true now there are two sargas in the balakand the third and the fourth sargas mm. which raise a question about the uttarakhand yes so in the balakand there is a reference to love and kush reciting the ramayana now how do we reconcile that yes yeah that comes in the chapter mm. in tamil there is a saying or periya pooshanikava or chinna sothu perukiyalam marakka mudiyathu it means a huge pumpkin cannot be hidden just by a single uh, a small rice mm-hmm. small amount of rice so while seeing such inconsistencies in the text of uttara ramayana this cannot be uh, supported by a single chapter in balakanda a small single chapter uh, since this chapter is uh, chapter has uh, uh, love kush story the whole right. of uttar ramayana has to be written by valmiki this logic is a very weak logic right point number 1 point number 2 we can see the differences between what is there in balakanda and what is there in uttar ramayana uh, what what are the differences uh, in uttar ramayana you have two persons kusha and lava singing the uh, epic ramayana but in balakanda repeatedly it is given as khushi lava khushi lava khushi lava and khushi lava if you go to the sanskrit dictionary any sanskrit dictionary in any sanskrit dictionary khushi lava means a musician that's all khushi lava is a musical bard that's all so khushi lava cannot mm-hmm. be khusha and lava it will come as lava kushau or khusha lava okay khushi lava means a musical bard is a common noun so two musical bards learnt ramayana from maharshi valmiki and sang in the house of ramachandra this is what we see in balakanda these musical bards are learning of course they are called as royal sons rajaputras the musicians can be the sons of king yes. also yes. so they to learn ramayana they must have learnt music and these musicians they learnt from maharshi valmiki and they are, of course they are called as who who have the resemblance of rama's uh, physic hmm. that is also there the, it is told bimba divotito bimbo yes. rama deha tatha paro they had uh, rama resemblance in their physical body this can happen to uh, rajaputras of course they say some 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 great souls they are described as they look like rama mm-hmm. okay like that this can be expressed these two boys uh, in uttar ramayana they are called as kusha and lava here kushi lavas in uttara ramayana they go to naimisharanya a forest named name and valmiki brings them to naimisharanya yes. uh, and they sing here in balakanda they themselves were wandering and they come to this uh, uh, rama's palace okay rama sees them in front of their palace and rama invites uh, kushi lavas and in uttara ramayana in naimisharanya in a huge court which included vanaras rikshas and ayodhyans ayodhya people so on and so forth rama is listening the whole of epic ramayana in balakanda rama with his family with his bharata shatrughna and lakshmana with his brothers he is listening to this epic in balakanda at the end of uh, uh, the chapter i think fourth chapter there rama says mama pita bhuti karam if we listen to this ramayana this ramayana being authored by a great sage valmiki this can bestow welfare for me too hmm. this is what rama says in balakanda but in uttar ramayana at the end of uh, listening to this valmiki uh, valmiki's ramayana sita is entering into chasm and they are getting separated from kusha and lava are getting separated from the mother and uh, lakshmana is getting separated from uh, rama and finally rama Uh, uh goes to heaven ayodhya people are entering into water all these things happen all mm. these things happen which is against the statement mama pita bhuti karam by hearing this we also will uh, get welfare so right. we'll compare we'll be compare this balakanda chapter with uh, uh, the happening in uttar ramayana they are inconsistent uh, this we need to understand and uh, of course i have a very strong doubt regarding this fourth chapter 2 Uh, whether okay. it is written by valmiki or not 
in spite of having that doubt huh. i am i am uh, telling how this chapter is inconsistent with uh, uttar ramayana story okay. Sometimes we make the mistake of relying on only one statement. For example, in one shlok, it is mentioned that there are six kandas and the uttar kanda. Yeah. Uh, actually, the shloka which you are talking about, chaturvimshat sahasra naam shloka naam uttavan rishihi tatha sarga shatanu panche shatkandani tatha uttaram. The very shloka. was just shunned by kathaka vyakhyakara vyakhyakara as an interpolation oh yeah uh, let me quote his his own words uh, very clearly he mentions that prachinena kenachit sarva shloka sankhya ganakena cha smarta shrotriya shlokavat swa mati saukarya siddhaye sthula drusha sankhya parijnanaya krutoyam shloka ग्रंथ समीपे चिखि तत् मूल ग्रंथ अंतर्गत भ्रांत स्वेशमी सामत संख्या पिज्ञान अस्तु प्राचीन ग्रंथा परक्षिप्त दिस्टेटमेंट हू स्टेटमेंट इज दिस कथका कमेंट्री आफ रायण ओके वेरी ओल कमेंट्री अंड दिस् कमेंट्री इज टेकन टू बी ए वेरी ग्रेट प्रमाण बै तिलक व्याख्यान कार Okay. Uh, you may be knowing Tilak, yes. not not Balaganga Adra Tilak. Yes. Tilak Vyakhyana is also a highly traditional uh, commentary for Valmiki Ramayana, and this Tilak Vyakhyana quite often quotes this Amrita Katakam. Amrita Katakam is a very old Valmiki Ramayana's Vyakhyana. Okay. Probably next to to Krishna Suri as you are okay. talking about. In that Amrita Katakam, uh, it is clearly given this loka which talks about twenty four thousand verses of Valmiki or seven kandas. This loka. he considers it to be very clearly he considers it to be uh, an interpolation sarvalog and he says clearly some person who has a peripheral understanding sthula drisha uh, to show the count of valmiki's ramayana he wrote this shloka and placed this shloka nearby the text he did not add that in the in the text while he is writing okay nearby in the palm leaf he must have written but later uh-huh. it was added also Okay. in the text this is what he says so according to the uh, tilaka vyakhyana this uh, according to the amrita kathaka vyakhyana kathaka vyakhyana yes okay mm-hmm. so according to the amrita kathaka vyakhyana mm. this shlok yes in the balakand is an interpolation yeah. yeah yeah okay and one more thing i want to add again i i repeat a huge pumpkin cannot be hidden by a small uh, a uh, small amount of rice so when we see huge amount of inconsistencies in uttar ramayana which never go with valmiki style just by having a, a, a one one chapter which uh, talks about uh, this kushilava story and just by having a small index which mm-hmm. is uh, found in balakanda uh, maybe the third and fourth chapters yes yeah third third and fourth chapters just by these two chapters you can't conclude that uttar ramayana is written by valmiki these two chapters we have every right to doubt strongly as the later editions in valmiki's original text more than this we can rely on the first chapter of valmiki uh, balakanda uh, where it clearly mentions uh, we, we clearly ends with the coronation ceremony yes. point number 1 in that expression before just before coronation ceremony uh, rama sitam anuprapya rajyam punaravaptavan it is given in that way uh, i let me let me chant those uh, that series of shlokas here you see here the end of this uh, first chapter of balakanda it goes in this way devatabhyo varam prapya samuttapya cha vanaran ayodhyam prasthitah ramah pushpakena sukhurdvrutah after getting boons from devas and the resurrecting vanaras rama comes back to ayodhya in pushpaka vimana bharadwaja ashramam gatwa rama satya parakramah bharatasya antikam rama hanumantam visarjayat after going to bharadwaja ashrama rama sends hanuman to bharata punarakyayikam jalpan sugriva sahitastada pushpakam tat samaruhya nandi gramam yeyutada vit sugriva he he through pushpaka vimana comes to nandi grama 
then nandigrame jatam hitva bratrubi sahitah anagah he gave up the matted hair uh, in nandigrama with his brothers then uh, please observe this ramah sitam anuprapya rajyam punaravaptavan uh, valmiki could have narrated after uh, giving up the matted hair in nandigrama with his brothers he got crowned uh, he got coronated in ayodhya mm-hmm. with this he could have ended but he again he recollects rama sita manuprapya after getting sita see see i will, I will translate in nandigrama he gave up his matted hair uh, uh, with his brothers uh, uh, after getting sita back he gets coronated what's the tone yes. why he is bringing again uh, getting back sita okay uh, which is told already yes before getting uh, boons from devas before resurrecting vanaras mm, uh, the first chapter narrates how rama got uh, reunited with sita there the same words are uh, expressed rama sita manuprapya here the same expression comes rama sita manuprapya rajyam punaravaptavanu after getting reunited with sita rama got crowned with this the uh, uh, ramayana narration in the first chapter ends what does it convey it conveys valmiki's heart is to end the epic with the reunion of sita with rama that very clear okay the sankshepa ramayana the ramayana sangraha or mool ramayana whatever you call the first chapter the first chapter just before coronation ceremony he uh clearly shows what can be the end of ramayana mm-hmm. end of ramayana is not just a coronation ceremony it is the reunion of sita with rama reunion of sita with rama is considered to be end by valmiki that is why again in the end he brings this rama sita manuprapya this expression is brought okay i i hope that i have conveyed rightly yes yes yeah. thank you <laughs> there is this uh, point of view that the gayatri mantra the 24 syllables of the gayatri mantra are encoded in the 24000 verses of the valmiki ramayana so if you look at the 1000th and the 2000th and the 3000th shlokas we get the gayatri mantra uh, we get the letters of gayatri. we get the syllables of the gayatri mantra true, true. is that true yeah it's a belief actually uh, this is called as gayatri ramayana they call it as gayatri ramayana and they say that uh, um 1000th um, 2000th 3000th they also show those shlokas this is a 3000th shloka this mm. is the 4000th shloka which has this letter of gayatri like this they have developed a, uh, a separate uh, ramayana called gayatri ramayana and this gayatri ramayana for your information has two versions mm-hmm. i have given both the versions in my book uttara ramayana and also i have given a table Uh, which shows that these shlokas found there are not the thousandth verses of valmiki um, first shloka tapaswadhyaya indratam is fine hmm. what they show as a thousandth verse of valmiki is not the not the thousandth verse but a 930th something like that uh, that verse of valmiki and to say that uh, this is uh, gayatri syllable okay okay both the versions fail in both the readings both the recensions south southern and uh, ramayana has two recensions right of uh, more more than two but here main recensions uh, northern and southern i have given the table which in both northern and southern recensions the shlokas the uh, don't come the shlokas found in gayatri ramayana don't come as the uh, 1000th and 2000th 3000th verses therefore if we do a hard research we can't prove this gayatri ramayana and therefore we cannot use the gayatri ramayana as a reason for saying that therefore the uttarakhand is yes. part of valmiki ramayana yes. that logic is flawed yes yes so that brings me to i think my final question on this how does tradition see the uttar ramayana the yeah. uttarakhand of the valmiki ramayana very important question uh tradition means what uh, there are hundreds of traditions in india and uh, um, they have their own views regarding uttara ramayana uh, let me elucidate um, for example 
in Tilaka Vyakhyana, uh, which is highly traditional, um, uh, the, the, the Tilaka Vyakhyana Kara considers Uttara Ramayana to be Khilam. He calls it as Khilam. Uttara Ramayana to Asya Khilam. Uh, you are mentioning, right? Uh, Ramayana Vidam Krishnam. It's a very important uh, statement. Yes. The same way in the beginning of Ramayana, in the second chapter, Dasha Shira Sascha Vadham Nishama Yadham. Listen to Ramayana uh, till uh, Ravana's death. This is how it is given. There, Tilaka Vyakyanakara comments, Dasha Shira Sascha Vadham Ityanena Vadhantam Srotavyam Iti Suchitam. One has to listen up to Ravana's death. Teneva Suchita Pala Labad. By this, uh, the one can get the uh, good results mm-hmm. which are mentioned in the epic. Uttarakandam to Asya Khilam. Uttarakanda is Khilam of Valmiki's Ramayana. The word Khilam is used. Uh, let me explain that Khilam little later. Now first, Uttarakandam to Asya Khilam iti Pranchaha. Normally, the ancient people they say that Uttarakandam is Khilam of Valmiki Ramayana. So he is also referring that this is not the first time he is saying yes, this. Yes, very important. That already it has been said. Yes, yes. So now let me come to the word Khilam. What, is, what does it mean, Khilam? Khilam has today various meanings in Sanskrit dictionary. But when we go to the exact meaning of Khilam, for that let me quote uh, Bhagavatam. Tasyaivam khilam atmanam manyamanasya khidyataha. Uh, in that, khilam is commented by Sridhara, Sridhara Swami as nyunam. Khilam means uh, a nikrishtamsha, a lesser part, an unimportant part, and not the same as uh, Valmiki's original Ramayana, uh, which ends with coronation ceremony. So, uh, that is this bhava uh, expressed here by the word. Khilam. So, well, uh, um, of course, later the Westerners, uh, um, they, they consider this as uh, the later addition and all. This so, also, there were Western scholars who considered this as an interpolation, the yes, Uttarakhand. Western scholars, uh, later the Western scholars considered as uh, interpolation, this is interpolation. Among the Western scholars, these all started with uh, uh, Gaspar Boratio. Yeah, very great Ramayana scholar who, uh, with the uh, deep devotion to Ramayana, with the uh, reverence to Indian culture, learned Ramayana and uh, translated into Italian language, no doubt. And uh, he, he must have got this idea uh, mm-hmm. that Uttar Ramayana's interpolation by reading Tilaka's commentary, Khilam, and uh, because he got the Tilaka commentary from H.H. Wilson, mm-hmm. point number one. And he also got uh, Lokanatha Chakravarti's uh, commentary of Ramayana from H.H. H. Wilson before publishing his own text. Again, Lokanatha Chakravarti did not comment uh, for Uttar Ramayana at all, like Maheshwara Tirtha. From that also, he must have derived this idea that Uttar Ramayana is interpolation. And H.H. H. Wilson, he considers Uttar Ramayana as a supplementary, he uses the word supplementary, supplementary to uh, the text, uh, original text of Valmiki. While translating Bhavabhuti's two dramas, mm-hmm. uh, Uttar Ramacharita and Veera Ramacharita. I don't know why Bhavabhuti uh, wrote two dramas at all. He could have written the same drama in which he would have brought Uttar Ramayana's story also. Definitely Bhavabhuti had seen some distinction mm-hmm. of the two texts, Valmiki's Ramayana and Uttar Ramayana. For that reason only, he wrote two dramas and this was recognized by H.S. Wilson. Mm-hmm. He explains that the Uttar Ramacharita story is from Uttarakanda, which is a supplementary to the epic of Valmiki. Uh, he recognizes this distinction. That also, from that also, Goratio derives the idea of uh, uh, this later edition idea. This is one thing. I don't think this question, a uh, very interesting question, your question. Is Uttar Ramayana traditional? If you go into it, let me uh, here uh, give you a list. Mm-hmm. 
when you go into mahabharata which has ramopakhyana which narrates ramakatha for ramakatha thrice at least in detail mm-hmm. markandeya's narration of ramayana to yudhishthira bhishma's narration of ramayana to pandavas and hanuman's sorry bhima's narration of ramayana to um, uh, hanuman the fourth one uh, is uh, uh, later uh, among various uh, royal lineages ramakatha comes mm-hmm. um, in the war of after the war of mahabharat in all these four narrations it all ends with coronation ceremony it uh, uh, doesn't talk about uh, uttara ramayana story and uh, tripitaka doesn't have uttara ramayana story let me just uh, here read the list bhasas dramas don't have the story of uttara ramayana harivamsha purana doesn't have uttara ramayana story the puranas don't have uttara ramayana story or vishnu purana matsya purana brahma purana kurma purana varaha purana vamana purana narasimha purana garuda purana bhavishya purana brahmanda purana brahma vaivarta purana linga purana shiva purana markandeya purana vayu purana these uh, puranas don't have uttarakanda story but the rest of the ramayana in some yes. form is there yes but not the uttarakanda yes. yes true true and uh, you also can see in the compositions of the great alwars except kulashekara alwar uh, uh, they don't narrate the uttar ramayana story and uh, 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 in even kulashekara alwar in his narration of ramayana in one narration he skips mm-hmm. uttar ramayana in another narration he narrates bhatti's ramakatha 7th century kavya doesn't have uttar ramayana murari's anarga ragava 9th century kavya jayadeva's prasanna ragava ends with coronation ceremony these uh, uh, these narrations don't have uttar ramayana and uh, ranganatha ramayana 13th century text of telugu uh, doesn't have uttar ramayana story uh, uh, Ra- ramabhadra dikshita's uh, uh, ramakarna rasayanam 18th century the this. great souls like tyagaraja uh, and uh, subramanya shastri uh, sita lahari um, uh, all these things uh, badrasa ramadas compositions badrasa ramadas compositions and uh, compositions of uh, the great soul samartha ramadas uh, these great souls uh, in, in these great souls compositions you don't see uh, mm-hmm. the story of sita's banishment or shambhuka vada uh, the uh, the uh, killing of shambhuka okay in few of the texts uttar ramayana is later added by the known authors known authors let me give here the list kamba ramayana in kamba ramayana it is added later by a known author so the original mm. by kamban did not have no no uttar kand no. and afterwards it was added yes. and we know who added it yes we know okay and uh, uh, in bhoja champu uttar ramayana is later added Uh, we know we know the author who added okay. in boja champu and madhava kandali assami ramayana very old ramayana 14th century ramayana uh, there also you can't see uttar ramayana story which is later added and we know the author okay so uh, this is and uh, uh, there are some texts where later added but the author is not known for example uh, in ramcharita manas uh, there is a kanda newly added uh in tulsidas ramayana called lavakush kand all devotees know all scholars know universally it is accepted this lavakush kand is not written by tulsidas nobody has uh, questioned it everybody knows that this is not written by tulsidas lavakush kand okay. okay and uh, in uh, i have established in this in my book uh, is in a systematic way that in bhavartha ramayana uttar ramayana is not written by sant eknath of course this is approved by all scholars mm, and i have established in three puranas in three puranas in bhagavata in agni purana and skanda purana um, uh, the sita's banishment comes but this is added later this i have established in my book okay. uh, let me give few texts where uttar ramayana story comes but the authors are dissatisfied with the mm-hmm. uh, the original version therefore they tried to refine that story take for example bhavabhuti bhavabhuti sutra rama charita where um, bhavabhuti made a very great attempt to refine the story but also this bhavabhuti sutra rama charita by the author himself 
is a work of fiction. He is not writing itihas. He is writing a play. Is that right? Yeah, you can tell in that way. For example, he changed the story to him to show the rasa of misery. Hmm. Uh, can can Babubuti be as authentic as Valmiki? If the, if you ask this question, definitely no. Take for example, while changing the story of Uttara Ramayana, he says after the banishment of Sita, Sita couldn't tolerate that misery. Being a pregnant lady, he fell in Ganga hmm. to commit suicide. And at that time, she gave birth to two children. And these two children became orphaned. And Maharshi Valmiki took the children and grew. And Sita in Ganga was floating. Uh, Ganga Mata took Sita to the chasm and kept her well for 12 years. And uh, without father and mother, uh, Valmiki grew the children, Kusha and Lava. All these stories, who can believe all these things? So clearly it's a work of yeah. fiction by the author. Yeah, there yeah. is no claim that this is Itihas, yeah. even by he the author. He may be a very excellent poet. There's yes. no doubt in it. He's a marvelous poet, perhaps greater than even Kalidas. That's a different thing. Mm -hmm. He's a very great Natakar of the world. That's a very different thing. But you can't relay uh, the story found in Uttar Rama Charitam as an Itihas, as you said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, Baba Bhuti made a very good attempt to refine the story of Uttar Ramayana. In the uh, same way, these, these uh, later works, 14th century works, like Adhyatma Ramayana, Rananda Ramayana, even though they are, their, their authorship is attributed to, they have high claims that they are written by, Adhyatma Ramayana says it is written by Lord Shiva, and Ananda Ramayana says it is written by Valmiki, just by seeing, having a glance of the verses found there. Mm -hmm. You can understand that these uh, uh, books are written in the 14th century. And Ramayana talks about Vijayanagara and mm -hmm. Rama's arrival to Vijayanagara kingdom and uh, Rama, uh, Rama's son Lavar Kusha, I am not remembering, gets married with a girl in uh, Vijayanagara. Uh, definitely Anand Ramayana came after Vijayanagara. Yes. By this we can understand how, uh, but Anand Ramayana says it is written by Valmi. And uh, they, they will uh, narrate the story and they try to refine and uh, by, in the name of refinement, uh, they will add more problem in Uttar Ramayana story. For example, Ananda Ramayana says, Sita was banished by Rama because of this reason. Um, some woman was talking to Rama at midnight. Sita was seeing that. And Sita developed some doubt whether uh, this is uh, due to some passion mm -hmm. of these two persons, Rama and that woman. So, uh, since she had that doubt, he made an she, she committed an apachar to Rama. And she faced these consequences. These kinds of stories, the, the poor authors, they wanted to make an attempt to refine the story, but they add more, uh, what to say? Confusion. Confusion to the story. Minds, yes. Confusion to the story. This is what we see, Ananda Ramayana and Kritivas Ramayana. All these, uh, uh, all these uh, several uh, Ramayanas, they uh, narrate the story to refine the story. And you, when you come to the Padma Purana, Padma Purana also is like that. Mm -hmm. Padma Purana says, uh, Padma Purana refines, Padma Purana tries to refine the story. What happens in Padma Purana? Rama sends Sita to Valmiki's ashrama. Valmiki brings back Sita and advises Rama, don't do all these things. Uh, and uh, he makes Sita to get reunited with Rama. This is how Padma Purana says. It's not following the yes. original Uttar Ramayana. <laughs> okay. So it is refined. To refine the story, these these things are written. Um, some scholars, some some poets have written, uh, like Balram Das, Jagmohan, Ramayan, or Kalidas, or Hanuman Nataka. Uh, these Prakash Rams, Kashmiri Ramayan, and Giridhar's Gujarati Ramayan. Here in these texts, Uttar Ramayana comes, but the authors are not happy with the date. Right. right. Uh, so anyhow, when we <laughs> summarize. Uh, in the tradition, we can say that some traditionalists, they, many of the, most of the traditional, many of the traditional writers of Ramayana, they skip this story. The story ends at coronation. Coronation. And uh, some of them, some of, in some of the texts like Kamba Ramayana, it is added by the known authors. In some of the texts, uh, they tried to narrate the story only to refine the story. Well, so this is also very few narrate again. the story yes. with displeasure. Okay. So this is how in tradition we see right. uh, the, the whole of tradition uh, we see the place of Uttar Ramayana. So throughout this video series, 
the approach we are taking is there are many versions of the Ramayana, but if we want to find out what actually happened, then the reference text is the Valmiki Ramayana. Yeah. And the Valmiki Ramayana ends with the coronation at the end of the Yuddhakand. As Valmiki himself said, Ramayanam idam kritsnam. This is the entire Ramayana. And therefore, Evam etatu puravrittam akhyanam. This is how it happened. This uh, is what happened. This is yes. the story. And this is where it ends. Yes. And therefore, the Uttarakhand is not a part of Valmiki Ramayana. It is not Itihas. Thank you very much, Dr. Ranganji, for sharing your views today. Thank you. And uh, I also enjoyed uh, um, to address this audience of Diyodharji uh, who are uh, um, watching this uh, uh, series of episodes of Ramayana by him and his uh, 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 Ramayana uh, is definitely um, uh, closer to the original text than other serials uh, which have uh, come up to our time. Therefore, uh, uh, we pray for uh, his welfare and his uh, growth of uh, service in the, to dharma. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. R. Rangan runs a gurukul near Bengaluru called the Valmiki Ashram, where more than a hundred people stay and learn about the Valmiki Ramayana. For more information about the ashram and Dr. Rangan's book on the Uttarakhand, please follow the link in the description below.